Okay, I think we're live. Um, I decided to do a live on both Facebook and Instagram. Um, so if you notice me looking, <laughs> um, my cameras aren't like right next to one another. So I'm having to like monitor two things at once. Um, and now I'm noticing that I have like this super awkward angle uh, for Instagram. So that's cool too. Um, thanks for everybody that's joining. I'm talking about um, mistakes that I see a lot of creatives making with their websites and how to fix them, what I suggest, and then um, any questions that you have about your website specifically. And then lastly, I have something really cool and free um, that I'm offering. And so um, I will tell you about that at the end. It is completely free. So, um, so. If you have any questions during this, or if you want to ask to on, um, like I said, I'm on Instagram and Facebook at the same time. So if you want to request to go online with me on Instagram and ask a question about your website, feel free to do that. And we will have some fun having a conversation about websites. Um, now to get into this, I'm going, I am a little bit scatterbrained whenever it comes to organizing thoughts. I'm not the best. I'm going to admit. Um, so I'm going to try to make this as intuitive as possible. Um, but we're going to be talking about the mistakes that I see creatives making with their websites and how I suggest that you fix them. Um, and so the first thing that I really want to go over is your navigation. Your navigation for your website is one of the easiest things to fix, um, but it's one of the things that I see a lot of creatives get wrong. Um, and by wrong, I mean, there's three things. It's too busy. Within your menu, you should have like maybe five places for them to go. Um, normally, I work with a lot of photographers, so it will be like home, about, galleries, experience, contact, possibly a blog. It's five different things. Whenever you start getting a really chaotic menu, People don't know where to go. They get like paralysis and they'll click off the page. Really, whenever you're creating a website, what you want to keep in mind is taking your viewer on a journey. That means that you're leading them where you want them to go next. Um, another thing that I see people get wrong with their navigation, um, and it's super easy, and there's a couple reasons why I suggest not using cutesy names on your menu is the first and biggest one is indexing. Whenever Google or somebody goes through your website, it's hard for them to know that um, something really off the wall that means like uh, a, instead of about, it has like get to know me or something ridiculous in the menu. Um, in the menu, we want to keep things super straight to the point. This isn't the place to get creative, um, not only for Google, but also for um, your viewer experience. I don't know that journal means blog. Um, I see that a lot too. Just keep it super simple because that's going to help people stay on your website longer is if they know where to go. Um, and lastly, <laughs> which just happens a lot more than you would think menus that don't work, especially whenever it comes to mobile menus. Whenever you get the little hamburger menus with like two or three lines, you have no idea how many people's menus don't work on their mobile website. And if your menu doesn't work, then bye. You just lost somebody who came to your website and was interested, but they can't get to any other page on your website. Um, so somebody asked, faces you love, they said, should I change investment to pricing? Uh, no, I think that investment is fine. Investing, investment or pricement, I put those two words together. Investment or pricing, um, both works. I think it really depends on your, um, your packages or your level of, are you trying to go for like higher end clients or is pricing more, whenever I hear pricing, I think of like a lower end, like maybe a shop or, you know, $500 or less. Whenever I hear investment, I'm thinking, you know, bigger chunks of money where it's going to be an actual investment. Um, uh, le love letters versus reviews. Oh, that's a 
one. Um, I used to have love letters on my, my website before, um, like way back in the day, you went and saw my, my first website design because I'm Carrie Love Design. So I thought, oh, love letters, that's so cute. Which it's not bad if you have it on like the actual review page to put love letters up at the top. But if it's in a menu, I would suggest reviews. So reviews for the menu, but then once they click on reviews, if it has love letters on the actual page, I think that's fine. But reviews, automatically I know what that is, so people aren't having to think harder. Um, and two, it's easier for um, SEO purposes for reviews to know what that is. Um, so moving on to the second thing, those are also really great questions. Love letters and investment pricing, I see that a lot. Um, so the second thing is your footer. Oh my goodness, your footer is such a valuable space. And whenever I'm talking about footer, that's going to be the very end of your website on each web page, what comes up at the, the very bottom. So your header is your top menu that you see on every page, and your footer is going to be the bottom that you see um, on every page. This is a great place if you have a chaotic menu and you need to add more links, but keeping the top menu very minimal. Um, so some, if you have like a shop, putting like in the top menu, home, about, shop, maybe contact. But if you have more things like education and um, pricing guides, and I'm trying to think of other, but your blog, but your blog's really not that important, that's a great place to add a sub menu is in the footer. So any other links that you want people to know about, but they're not really that important. Like in mine, I have links to my freebies and the Get Back to Business podcast that I host. They're really not that important on my website, um, but they are important. So I put them in the footer so that they're still there and if people are looking for it, they can find it. But there's no need to have it up in the top menu. Um, another place for the footer is good SEO purposes. And another um, way to add in what you do in one simple swoop. Um, so for photographers in their footer, I always try to put like, um, let me use one of my past clients for example, um, like Queen Friday Photography. I put Queen Friday Photography is a but it is a um, lifestyle and wedding studio located in the greater Austin area. So I'm getting SEO purposes in there. Um, I put it as like either a header or an H1 if you know, it depends on your, your website knowledge. I put it in a very high so that um, I'm getting that into the SEO as well because usually that's what I copy and put into um, the, the SEO, I'm, I work on show it a lot. So whenever you click into show it and you're adding like your SEO tags, I copy that exactly what I put in the footer. I put it over there. Um, so that just helps index your website better. Now she asks, uh, wedding planner footer. Are you asking like what to put in the footer for a wedding planner? Um, because if you want, you can request to go live and we can talk about it a little bit more. If you don't feel comfortable, that's fine. Um, because I, in the footer for wedding planner, I put stuff that's, once again, not super important that it needs to be in the top menu. Um, but if you have stuff for your clients or freebies and stuff like that, that's important. I put that in the footer. And then also, if you're a wedding planner, I put like um, whatever was... I'm going to butcher your name. I try not. Dana Renee Designs. Okay, so I put Dana Renee Designs is a wedding planning studio located in located in the Austin area and serving beyond. Because um, I don't know if you serve like one area or if you serve nationwide. Um, checklist. If you have, is that like a freebie to checklist? I would put that in the footer as well. Um, and then also put your, for branding purposes, put your logo or a secondary logo in the footer as well. The more that people see your logos and your branding, the more it's going to register and they're going to remember it. So it's another great place just to add more of your brand elements to it. And then lastly, this is the, uh, this is my favorite. Okay, well, there's two more things, but I'm gonna jump to this one because it's my favorite. Your contact form, on your contact page, 
this is where you can get ahead of the game. This is where you can start to show an amazing client experience from the very beginning and knock their socks off. After somebody fills out their contact form, I want you to automatically send them an email, set up with like their email marketing system, set up some way that you can send them your pricing guide if it's applicable so that they can get a direct link to like a PDF and say, hey, thanks for contacting me. Here's a pricing guide. Um, let me know, you know, if you're ready to move forward. A call link to if they need to schedule a call. Yes, add that in there. So like, here's my pricing guide. You can do all, all three of these or just one. You're like, hey, here's my pricing guide. Um, please let me know if you like what you see and if you know this fits within your budget, then please schedule a call so that we can talk about your project even further. And then lastly is add a freebie in there. So going back to the wedding planning, maybe you have all three of those in there. You're like, hey, this is my pricing guide. This is if you want to schedule a call and you're ready to move forward. And also, just because you stuck around and you filled up my contact form, I'd love to give you this free gift of 25 ways to save money on your wedding or something like that. Boom, you just knocked their socks off. Not only are they getting more education and value from you, they're learning more about you and your brand, and you're creating an amazing experience from the start, which begs higher prices. So that's like my favorite tip is getting past the contact form and just adding that little extra something because I'll tell you 10% of not even probably 10% of people do this. So if you, if somebody contacts you and they get this and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this person's on top of their game. Like I want to work with them because this experience was amazing. Yes. Also builds trust. Um, so you can do one of those, all three of those. I would just automatically follow up with somebody as soon as they fill out a contact form, because like uh, Dana was saying, it builds trust. And it's, I hate it whenever I fill out a contact form on my own. And then after I fill out the contact form, I'm like, okay, did they, did they get it? Did they receive what, I mean, like, when are they gonna contact me? That's another thing. On your contact form, whenever they submit it, I would say, hey, I'll get back to you within 24 hours or 48 hours, whatever your time frame is, so that people know when you expect uh, to hear something back, and if they don't, they can follow up with you. All right, this one I kind of skipped over, and it's another good one, um, is your galleries or your portfolio. I always see whenever I get a new client coming to me for their website design, and from their website design, they're like, hey, I really want to attract these high-end um, wedding clients. And um, I really, I like shooting bright and airy, you know, like rustic weddings. And I go to their portfolio and it's like the complete opposite. Like it's dark, moody, like not really speaking high end. And I'm like, well, this is the disconnect right there. You need to show in your portfolio what it is that you are trying to attract. Because if I'm looking for, I'll go back to the photographer example. If I'm looking for um, clients that want really bright and airy and lifestyle portraits and my portfolio isn't speaking to that, one, they're not going to know that that's what I shoot in. And two, they're, I mean, it's a disconnect altogether. So I really, really want you to go in, curate your galleries, think about every single thing, find your favorite clients, your most dreamy clients that you have worked with, Make sure you're putting those into your portfolio uh, so that you're attracting what it is that you want to, um, what you want, want it to come. Sometimes I lose my words, which is fine. Um, all right, so this has been really, really good. I have loved all the questions that I got. Um, the last is I am doing something that I've actually I've, I've never really done before um, and I am excited about it is I'm going to be offering five free website audits. And what that is, you give me the link to your website. I'll have you fill out a questionnaire. I'll go to your website and I am going to record 
your like me talking while I'm looking at your website and I will go in there and give you all the suggestions that I think that you should make throughout your entire website. So going from page to page to page, sort of like I did kind of on this live, this um, live I'm going to do for your website while looking at it um, and giving you exact what I recommend. Um, and so I'm only offering five of those spots, completely 100% free. Um, I'm just going to use them for marketing purposes, so that's the only thing is that I'll have you sign something that says, hey, I can use this for marketing. Um, but other than that, there's no like hidden catches or anything. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can email me at hello at carrylovedesigns.com, or you can send me a direct message and I can send you um, the link to sign up for that but it's completely free and I'm really excited about it because um, building web websites is like my absolute most favorite thing to do. I actually just was building one and show it and I stopped so that I could do this for y'all right now. Um, shout out to Jordan if you're on here. Um, I was working on your website. So I really hope that you enjoyed this. I am going to be back on here um, next Tuesday at the same time because I'm going to start making this a regular thing. It was, and then I moved, and then it wasn't, and now I'm back. So if you have any other questions that I didn't get a chance to answer or you're watching this back um, on the replay, um, send me a direct message, or if you're on Facebook, comment, and I will be sure to answer your question. Um, but other than that, have a great afternoon.